welcome uh, to a discussion on Gandhian perspectives on development. This course relates to our MA program in sociology, sociology of development, and it specifically refers to the perspectives on development. Today we shall be discussing the Gandhian perspectives on development. As you know, development is an aspiration, development is a dream. Every human being look for development. Today we shall be concentrating a philosopher, a humanist, a national leader like that of Mahatma Gandhi, how he has thought of the developmental perspective specifically for India which can be replicated in other parts of the world. Gandhian perspective is located in a particular situation in the country and we will be examining how he perceived a model of development for Indian population in the early part of the 20th century and how it is relevant even today. When Gandhi came back to India from South Africa in 1914, he saw Indian society very closely. By the time he saw that the self-sufficient village community of, of village community system of India that was providing the backbone of Indian society. It was dependent on agriculture and cottage and household industry and that was giving self-sufficiency of the people in terms of the production of the goods and services, distribution of the goods and services and also consumption of the goods and services. But with the arrival of the British, the self-sufficient village community system of production, consumption of distribution, in which each category was producing, for example, agriculturist was producing the food, the protests and carpenters are producing the required tools and techniques, and other the service providers, the washermen, the barber, and others, they're providing the required services. It's a village community system, a simple lifestyle that was widely followed by others. When the Britishers came, Britishers induced, introduced a good variety of the British product to Indian country, Indian soil and Indian villages. And simultaneously, British also introduced a new land arrangement, what we are knowing that the permanent land settlement of India that started in 1797. What this settlement talked about, there will be intermediaries between the landowners and the state. The intermediaries are the Jomindars, the Jyotidars and others. And in the whole process, layers of intermediary emerge. And what we find, the self-sufficient village community system of production, where the cultivators are the owners, simultaneously they are the producers, the cultivators become a marginalized community. Varieties of the other communities in the rural India emerge. There was nothing known. Many of the foreign travelers of India, they have documented that in India, in even in late 19th century, there was nothing much presence of agricultural laborers and sharecroppers and the tenant. What they found before the departure of the British, starting from early 20th century, a huge number of agricultural laborers, landless agricultural laborers emerged in the scene. Simultaneously, there were emerged the tenants and the sharecroppers, the small and marginal cultivators, those who are dependent on the self-sufficient village community system of production gradually become an insecure social categories. Simultaneously, what happened? The village industries and cottage industries, those who are producing various tools, techniques, and other requirements of the villagers, those also got destroyed because the British product have started coming in. So what happened? Two things happened. Land system becomes segregated and the destruction of the village and cottage industries took place. So what happened? There was large displacement from the land, from the traditional occupation of uh, carpentry, uh, pottery, webry, etc. like this and what we find also gradual displacement from his own self-sufficient habitat. That produced enormous varieties of discontent in the society. Those discontent are widely reflected in terms of the peasant discontent, peasant movement. We know we have seen the Santal movement, the Nil Darpan, Nil movement in Bengal. Also we find the Champaran movement 1917, spearheaded by Mahatma Gandhi, then the Khera Shottagraha, the Bardole movement took place in 1928. Also simultaneously, we find large scale participation of the peasants 
uh, in our civil disobedience movement. Simultaneously, there was also gradual emergence of the workers because British industry started penetrating and British uh, pro uh, products are to be produced or produced from Indian soil. So many industries were formed. So there were the workers, workers also facing a lot of discontent in the society. So workers movement started taking place. You will be interested to know that first workers movement in India was represented by Mahatma Gandhi, that is Ambed, uh, the Ahmedabad workers strike. Uh, they invited Mahatma Gandhi uh, to make a presentation and uh, th th that was the first organized workers movement in India. So that was the background, the discontent of the peasants, the workers, the small cultivators, tenants and sharecroppers were brewing in the country. Uh, so, so a developmental perspective had to be thought of, that how it can be thought of, how, how a new India can, uh, can, uh, can grow uh, on the foundation of a new developmental perspective. Mahatma Gandhi was thinking for that. Mahatma Gandhi started coming from India, coming to India uh, uh, from uh, Africa. Uh, he, he realized that India lives in the villages. India's heart lives in the villages. So it is the village economy, village society that was producing a different kind of ambience of this moral, spiritual economy. But he, what he was saying, he, he was not going only by a simple impression. Mahatma Gandhi started traveling the whole all country. He started walking by foot. He started using the bullock cart, the bus and train. He, he traveled from, the, uh, from one part of the country to another to know the Indian village life. So what he tried to understand, the enormous kind of interrelationship Indian society that is from Indian rural spiritualism, the relation to nature, culture and the self-sufficiency, a kind of an integration, integration with the anomic spiritualism, relation to nature, relation to culture and self-sufficiency. What he talked about, what he found that Indian economy, Indian village, Indian people can survive only founded on self-sufficiency. What he also simultaneously looked, out, uh, looked into and he realized that despite all those distractions, the village development, the village was the cornerstone of Indian economy, polity and culture. So what he thought of, the self-sufficient development which was there in the village that is to be rebuilt, that is to be thought of. So he, he started thinking of how the self-development, the village development, village development can be the self-development and that can get a priority of the materialistic development of, of India. And also he, he tried to make a distinction at that point of time. He made a distinction between the material progress on the one hand, also talked about the real progress on the one hand. The, by material progress, he thought in terms of oil being uh, in, the, in, uh, in the organization of production. But he told uh, that is not the aim of human being. Human being, uh, real aim is the real progress. Real progress is that, how, how the real progress to be thought of? Real progress, he thought of a kind of interrelationship. Interrelationship between spiritualism, relation to nature, relation to culture, and self-sufficiency in terms of consumption, production, and distribution. Here he tried to root, root his development the slogan in terms of what he called Sadeshi. That is, think in terms of indigeneity, think in terms of the real need of the people. His indigeneity was linked to the need of the people, need of the villager, need of the common people of India. So what Gandhian development perspective Gandhi thought of, Gandhi has given, uh, if you are to summarize, um, his, his developmental plan, developmental perspective, maybe we have to speak in four different areas. One is that what he talked, that is uh, Shadeshi, Shadeshi, how the Shadeshi can be formed, that is one. Number two, that Shadeshi, after that, he talked about, uh, that is education, how Shadeshi can be inculcated through the process of education. Third, he talked about in terms of Shadeshi can be promoted through indigenous culture, that is what is that indigenous culture giving lot of importance to the indigenous institution, the village panchayat, the gram panchayat. He talks about employment, talks about imp uh, 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 education, he also talks about the health, how the health of the rural people can be taken care of, whole sanitation program. Then he talks about 
you know, uh, a, a developmental initiative that is sustaining. He has given a elaborate um, a program of action that is program for development. So this three or four part of Gandhian perspective we will be discussing one after another. So first part what he talked about that is Swadeshi. How the Swadeshi he talked about that is it is that for him Swadeshi is founded on Khadi that is our handloom and handloom is linked to the village culture and village industries. He how, how he tried to develop the argument is that that is Swadeshi is founded on producing the cloth that cloth that covers the body that is the initial human need your body is to be covered that your body is to be covered that bo that cloth is to be produced in India then that should be produced uh, based on the handloom that is the khadi and here it talked about the Swadeshi cloth that is uh, indigenous uh, internally locally produced cloth uh, based on charka that is that that is what he talked about the khadi so for khadi to him that is the production of the cloth that covers the body it's a big symbol that is swadeshi is not only a material product of producing a cloth it is a symbol it is a symbol of mentality symbol of self determination that you can cover your body by yourself through your own labor with the resources available in the villages, with the labor available in the villages, so you can produce the cloth to cover your body. So it is a kind of a product, it's a mentality, it's also a kind of a proud and it's a kind of an empowerment. What he talked about when you go for khadi, you wear the cloth, uh, handloom cloth and produce it by yourself. So what you feel a sense of sense of empowerment, self or sense of self-sufficiency, a proud of your own identity. So what he was talking about that is if independent is to be acquired, if independence is to be you know is to be ensured for the maximum number of the people, for the, rather the whole people of the country, it means that Indian should be self-sufficient in terms of to be dependent on its own production, own consumption that is founded on Khadi. So Khadi also talks about not only uh, a mentality of Swadeshi, empowerment and identity, it also talks about a process of decentralization of the production. If there is a mechanized production, there is a process of centralization. So for him, Khadi is a kind of decentralized. When there is decentralization of production, decentralization of consumption or distribution, power does not remain concentrated only in the hand of limited people, those who are having control about the production process. So he was a very intelligent man. He was thinking in terms of dissemination and decentralization of the production process. So it does not re remain controlled in the hand of the limited few. So what he was going further, it is a spinning wheel. That is what you call charka. What is spinning wheel? It is a sign of progress. So it is a progress of upliftment, upliftment of the poor, upliftment of the villagers, the farmers. So what he was talking about so far. So far, with the arrival of the British, the villagers are dependent on the town to get the cloth. Here is the time the villagers will produce the cloth. Now the urbanites will come and they will compensate and they will purchase the cloth from the villagers. So it, it, it will give more and more self sufficient to the villagers. So by Khadi, let me again, again summarize this part. By Khadi he was talking, it's, it's a kind of commitment to indigeneity. It's a kind of commitment to the freedom, a kind of a mentality and self-determination for the fulfillment of one life in terms of own resources. It's also in terms of empowerment of the people that talks of a proud identity. It's a means of uniting the Indian in terms of a common indigenous resources and also fulfilling the basic necessities and integrating the rural urban life together with the production of khadi that is the, our indigenous production uh, 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 from the villages. Now let us come that is uh, how, how the uh, when he was talking about uh, the khadi that is a symbol of the uh, spinning wheel, uh, charka. Uh, he was also talking about village industries and the self-sufficiency. For him, that is, charka is the center of rural development. 
this is this is uh, this is if if uh, rural india is to be developed it is to be founded on the charka so any kind of developmental slogan if it is to be anti malaria campaign if it is to be improvement of sanitization settlement of the villages etc like this several other endeavors he told it is to be founded on charka what he was putting charka and the at, at, at the center of everything because it is the center of production distribution and consumption so when you are concentrated and interlinked with the whole process of production distribution and consumption other societal need in terms of anti malaria campaign in terms of lepro anti leprosy campaign in terms of sanitation campaign in terms of settlement of the village dispute so it is to be founded on certain indigenous institution that i am coming little later what kind of political and social institution he has talked about and he also talked about that is those spinning machine uh, 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 you know will will provide the livelihood security uh, and give employment assurance to the largest number of the village population at that time around more than 80% of the of indian population are dependent on the land and, and living in the rural areas he also simultaneously talked about that is uh the a kind of a uh, interrelationship between the village industries and uh, uh, he was talking about the khadi industries he was giving more emphasis on the khadi industries not on the village industries what he was talking about it is the hand loom not the machine loom it is the hand loom production that will be empowering and that to, that will give, give a village people a sense of self confidence and self of empowerment so that they can remain grounded in their own culture own tradition and simultaneously they can aspire for liberation and a kind of a self sufficiency in the in in the village so what he was taking simultaneously the village village life is is to be complete in its own way how it will it is to be com, uh, uh, complete that it should have varieties of the activities around the spinning what is that the hand grinding hand pounding soap making paper making turning oil pressing everything all kind of activities those are part of the local village um, uh, khadi industries or the village industries those are to be interlinked keep in mind when mahatma gandhi was talking about a development and self sufficiency his sense of self sufficiency is linked to the well being of human being in terms of realization of its own life not a realization of a materialistic life if realization of a spiritual life he was talking about the simple life to live in terms of need not in terms of greed so when you are living in terms of the basic minimum need and realizing the very purpose of your human being very purpose of your ontology or being in the society he was giving a lot of emphasis on this resources available in hand that is resources available in terms of land in terms of um, village industry in terms of acharka wheeling machine wheel machine etc like this so he was talking about a life pattern which is a kind of interlinked in terms of the nature in terms of culture in terms of the local resources and total spiritual and overall development of a human being now what he talked about gandhi ji also talked about in terms of a that when when he he came to india he found on the one hand destruction of the village cottage industries that has made indian people feel a sense of dejection from the economy and simultaneously a lot of penetration of the foreign good to the indian soil so what he tried to see what is the, uh, that is lot foreign machine has come and foreign pro, pro, product uh, have also come to indian society so what he told he found that that is if indian indian uh, uh, industry indian economy is to be uh, developed uh, there is it is not to be developed to be dependent on sophisticated machine so he was he was never in favor of sophisticated machine rather he told there should be boycotting of machine made good and one should favor the handmade goods handmade goods are indigenous machine made products are foreign so what he was talking about swadeshi in terms of developing in terms of local resources and that satisfied the social economic life of the villagers of the common man um, at that point of time 
So what uh, he was also simultaneously giving importance that uh, agriculture is to be developed because uh, people need food. But he was never in terms of wide introduction or revolutionary change in ag agriculture in terms of modern tools and techniques. Because he, his thinking was that people will be, need self-sufficiency. People need self-sufficiency without destroying the nature. So whatsoever it is available with the mother earth, uh, without disturbing it, we, sh if we should produce. So Indian peasants uh, required the introduction to the spinning wheel more rather than to the uh, modern machine. So what he was trying an organic relationship of Indian agriculture with the spinning machine, Indian agriculture with the household industry, Indian agriculture with the khadi. So what he was trying, he was trying a restoration of the glory of spinning wheel that brought India um, a, a sense of glory in the past. Uh, because India was economically one of the developed regions in the world that attracted the colonial uh, power to come to India. So, uh, but coming here, they have already robbed India of all the resources. So, what Mahatma Gandhi was thinking to retaliate that power in terms of developing that capacity from within rather than to be dependent on the other. He was trying to develop a kind of a mechanism, a kind of an arrangement that will be self-empowering, self-dedicating, self-producing. So, so you know, self, that is indigenity, indigenity, Swadeshi was the Mool Mantra in his all developmental discourse. So, so that is one part he was talking about the production process. What should be the nature of production? Uh, about agricultural production and uh, how, uh, you know, khadi production because you need some production and also through the production you will get some employment. So, it, relationship between the production and employment and the organization of production was taken care of uh, in his all Swadeshi um, uh, discourse. Now, come what he was talking about in terms of education because as a human being you need education. You need employment, you need organization production, you also need education. So what he was talking about in terms of um, uh, educational need? Gandhi was firmly believing on certain fundamental basic education to fulfill the basic need and a kind of organic relationship between the uh, body, mind and the soul. So it is, it is not a commercial education he was talking about. He was talking about the organic relationship of the body, mind and the soul. Because it is not only intellect, he was also talking about the soul. You need to purify your soul, you need to enhance your mind, but there should be, that should be organic linkage along with the body. So what he was talking about, uh, uh, as a foundation stone, uh, foundation stone of his uh, educational perspective, that is the language. He, he, he thought that uh, the education must be taught in our own language rather than the English language. So until unless you know your own language, um, you, you, you disseminate your education on your own language, there is a gap between the teacher and the taught. There is a uh, gap between the learner and the learned. Because the way things are communicated, the way um, all discourses, the learning process are communicated, uh, this is to be communicated in a very communicable language. For his vernacular language is the is the own uh, is the foundation in which uh, that is to be founded. Gandhi also simultaneously gave emphasis of a national language. What is the national language? He told Hindi should be given an importance. Because that will be that will be communicating uh, among all those uh, communities. So we should have a national language. Simultaneously, we should also give a lot of importance on the universality of the local language. And uh, he he was not in favor of um, uh, uh, expression and emphasis on the English education um, or any any education that is founded on the foreign languages. Uh, and his, his quotation is quite interesting here. Uh, he speaks, those who have received education through foreign tongue could not represent the masses because the people do not identify themselves with such person or with such language. So if you are to communicate with the foreign language, if you are to uh, communicate with the foreigners, that's okay. But if you are communicating with the local student, if you are communicated with the Indian student, you should know the Indian language, you should communicate in their own language. 
so what he was giving uh, a lot of importance on the vernacular language and also uh, a, a kind of a national language so what are the component of his education that is in terms of language but there are some some other important component on his education that is one important com component as i told the organic relationship between the body mind and the soul by saying it mahatma gandhi was giving a lot of importance on spirituality what to make a distinction between theology and spirituality he was giving the spirituality of a language spirituality of understanding that how you can liberate yourself with the materialistic desire and you can devote yourself to the service of the human kind and that sense of liberation should emanate should come from the educational system itself so you should not enslave yourself with the knowledge that you have gained rather you are liberating yourself to dedicate yourself uh, for the cause of humanity so when you are dedicating yourself for the cause of humanity you are contributing to the whole process of character building so it takes us to another stage that is when he was talking about the organic relationship between the body mind and soul he was talking about the spirituality he is also talking about a sense of liberation from uh, 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 liberation um, uh, 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 from the materialistic desire you are placing yourself to a higher kind of understanding uh, elevating yourself to a sense of spirituality so by doing it by doing it you should you should have the foundation of education as such that what are as such number one you are organically linking yourself in terms of body mind and soul you are having a spirituality and you are liberating yourself with the, from the all uh, dominating forces and you are creating a platform to educate the child to to come to that level so how you will do it here he is talking about the need of a naya talim new educational arrangement so what is the cornerstone of his naya talim that is widely we talked about mahatma gandhi is synonymous with naya talim that is new education what is naya talim he is talking about the foundation of his naya talim as i told earlier the organic relationship between the body mind and soul that is you, you, you are going to develop that a organic relationship between the body mind your body is not dissociated is not disembedded um, from your mind and your mind is not disembedded from your soul what is the soul soul is talks about your relationship with the nature with the universe with the fellow feeling with the surroundings so in that way you will be able to link yourself through your physical existence through your mental capability you will liberate yourself to dedicate to the cause of humanity to the cause of the well being of this earth so how it is to be done it is to be done both a new educational framework that will not be site of learning will not be only the school also the family so he is saying the school should be an extension of the family culture family should also be an extension of the school so here is a kind of organic relationship again between the school and the family because we learn more from the neighborhood from the surroundings uh, then from the technical schooling environment so until unless there is a reinforcing mechanism with the school and the family family and the school for if that organic relationship that kind of a body mind and soul relationship will not grow so what he was emphasizing a kind of interrelationship between body mind and soul through through interrelationship between the school and the family culture by this he was talking about there will be not only not only the basic learning basic learning is important that is people should learn the three r reading writing and comprehension that is that is important reading writing calculation and comprehension quite important simultaneously uh, he was also giving a lot of emphasis on learning the craft learning craft through the education so what he is giving the importance because the earlier economy when he was talking about he was talking about the local craft local culture so what is important that part also be linked because art 
craft is a part of your nature, part of your culture, part of universality. So that is to be made part of your education and that is to be linked to your family and also linked to your educational arrangement and by doing it, you will be serving the economy, you will be serving the society. So what kind of craft link should be there? He is talking about that is learning craft is the center of the teaching program. So it is not only reading and writing, also learning the craft. What are those craft? That is everyday requirement of the life that we need. We need the clothes. So we would be knowing a lot of spinning. So spinning should be part of educational arrangement. There should be weaving. We should know how to weave clothes. There should be leather work. We should know how to make shoes, how to repair shoes, how to make pottery, what is the metal work. So how to make basket, how to make uh, book binding. So other kind of a thing, what he was giving a lot of emphasis in terms of skill development. So it is not only you are liberating your, your, your faculty through an organic relationship between the body, mind and soul, what you are also uh, trying to do, you are trying to come to the uh, fulfilling, sufficing the practical need of the people, becoming part of spinning, the weaving, the leather work, the pottery, the metal work, the basket making, the book binding, each and every activities, those which are required, you are becoming part of that. So what is uh, he is talking about? Learning is to be integrated uh, with everyday requirement along with the requirement of liberation of your soul uh, from your body and mind with an integration. Here, the next phase he talks about that learning is a lifelong process. It is not that only up to certain stage of life you learn. In traditional Indian culture, we are having uh, you know, a certain ashram of the life. What is this ashram? We are having um, uh, you know, Brahmacharya, Grihastha, Banaprastha and Shandash. It is widely talked about in traditional Indian spiritualism and spiritual culture that up to certain stage of life, people will engage themselves with the learning process at the stage of Brahmacharya. So what he is talking about, your learning process should not be only concentrated during the stage of Brahmacharya. So you have to go beyond that. What is that? It should be a lifelong process. Here he gives a lot of importance on adult education. Maybe when Gandhiji was thinking, and till now we think in, uh, in a huge way, uh, in our country, uh, we, till now we are having um, around 25% of the population, uh, those who are illiterate. 75% uh, people are literate. By saying so, people, those who can read and write. Let us come to that point. How many percentage of our people go to the higher education? It is only 26 or 27 percent of the population can go to the higher education. But the bulk of the people has still remained illiterate or semi-literate. What Mahatma Gandhi was emphasizing, need of adult education. So need of adult education, that adult people, their needs are to be looked into, they are to be given education. And he is simultaneously talking about that adult education should not be divorced from earlier kind of educational paradigm or educational perspective what he is talking about organic relationship between the body mind and soul interrelationship between the family uh, and the school institution and also interrelationship between the uh, our school curriculum along with our other teaching program of craft and other kind of skill development activities, those are interlinked. So what we are finding, a kind of a holistic development in, in his Noyatalim, Mahatma Gandhi has thought of and talked about. So by saying so, Mahatma Gandhi also make a distinction between the uh, uh, materialism and the progress. Because when we are talking about education, education for what? Usually in the modern, uh, modern term, uh, 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 by education, we mean a kind of a, a knowledge package that is certified by certain uh, educational institution or certain bodies and those certificate education is a kind of a commodity. Because education is a commodity, based on commodity, purchase another commodity. But education is a kind of a certification, through that certification you purchase um, uh, uh, another kind of commodity. That is, you, you become capable, you declare yourself capable somebody declares yourself capable uh, to 
be worth of the knowledge you have acquired and accordingly somebody enters into the job and employment market. So knowledge is a kind of commodification uh, process, a commodification process. Uh, but Mahatma Gandhi was talking about knowledge from a different perspective that will push everybody, push everybody not towards the materialistic world but towards the path of progress. What he is talking about? He was against the materialistic progress and materialistic development of the society. And to quote him, if, we, if I exactly remember what he is talking about, so far as we have made the modern materialistic craze as our goal, if we have made the modern materialistic goal as our craze, perhaps we are going downhill in the path of our progress. So he is talking about our path of progress is not the materialistic. Our path of progress is not materialistic. That is a spiritual development, developing an organic relationship between the body, mind and soul. So here he is deviating, he is dissociating himself from the materialistic path. He is talking in terms of a spiritual path. Uh, then he talks about if the people who are, who make the pursuit of wealth, as their aim of life, if the people make the pursuit of wealth is their only aim of their life, perhaps, perhaps we are again making a downhill journey. So it is not pursuit of wealth, it is not pursuit of materialistic well-being. What is the pursuit? It's pursuit of spiritual uh, and, and a kind of an integrative relationship between the nature, culture and human being. So here he was talking about, when we are talking about, not as much with the materialism, we are talking about the human progress, perhaps we are mostly talking about in terms of equality. Mahatma Gandhi was dead against inequality between the capital and the labor. So what he was talking about, the conflict between the capital and labor is to be, is to be eliminated from the society. So there is a kind of a coexistence between, between all varieties of the laborer, all varieties of the workers, all varieties of the human being within the ecosystem of nature, culture and soul living together. So what he is talking about, yeah, if that thing, a kind of a uh, uh, non-conflicting relationship to be developed between the capital and the labor, there is to be a kind of a social trusteeship. Social trusteeship means it is the industrialist, they will, they will take care of the need, the rich will take care of the need of the poor, that is the have-nots, so, so that they can also contribute to develop an organic relationship between the soul, body and mind. Ultimately, it is the human development, it is the integrated development between the soul, body and mind. So what he is widely talking about, that is all kind of development, that is social trusteeship, value for the labor and also the uh, progress the way we were talking about the non materialistic progress everything to be everything to be ingrained and linked to the educational process until unless it is it, it is made part of the educational process uh, it will not be reproduced it will not be sustaining so he was talking about a sustainable society a sustainable educational perspective in which human being will grow not in terms of its materialistic development rather in terms of an integrated development a harmonious relationship between nature culture and human being integrated relationship between the body mind and soul so again again we come back to his whole argument that is the swadeshi that is Charkha is found in Swadeshi, but let us say, uh, uh, talk it further um, because it is a development, it is a development. By Swadeshi what he talked about, Swadeshi he means in the self-governance. That is, it is not only the production, you are also will have the self-governance. You should have self-reliance, you should have a sense of self-employment, particularly those who are living in the villages. So Swadeshi is not only in terms of charka, the production, Swadeshi also in terms of you are governing yourself. 
you are also self reliant you are self employed and particularly you are self employing uh, uh, remaining self employed in the ambience where you are living you are living in a village culture so he was he was not in terms of ruthless process of urbanization modernization and industrialization rather he was speaking in favor of sustaining a, a rural community system sustaining a village culture where everybody will remain self governance Will, uh, will be self governed will remain self reliant will be self employed employed and will will be uh, looking for a world that is self fulfilling now how it will be looked into he is talking about not that the villagers will not have the relationship with the wider world they will have the relationship with the wider world the economic and political power will will lie in the hand of the village assembly of the villagers the villagers will decide their their way of life the villagers will decide uh, their need and the ways and means to to satisfy those need so what he was talking about a kind of a economic and political power remaining concentrated in the hand of the villager so what he was he was talking about in terms of domain of politics he was talking about that is self governance through certain indigenous institution here he gave lot of emphasis on the village community village assemblies what we know nowadays that a village panchayat system so he was giving a lot of emphasis on the self governance self reliance and self employment in terms of reinstating the uh, institution of village panchayat village assemblies those who lost its relevance during the during the british period so he was talking about an arrangement that arrangement is to be reinforced by reinforcing the indigenous institutional arrangement uh, within the village culture uh here, here what he was talking about that is uh, it is uh, uh, in the domain of economic and swadeshi uh, it is it is he was speaking no obviously he was speaking only those thing those were produced in the indigena indigenously but simultaneously he also talked about that is there is there is uh, poverty in the village there is also ignorance in the village there is also so many other problems in the village so those village, those problems are to be addressed those problem are to be addressed by making the people more and more self reliant when people becoming self reliant he was not talking about the one section and the other the rich and the poor upper caste and the lower caste one religious community another religious community he is talking about the self reliance of the each and every section of the people so for him it is the last man in the queue the last man in the line if you can look into the last man in the line how the last man in the line will be self governed will be self reliant and will be self employed perhaps the majority of the problem which we are looking in the contemporary world that will be taken care of so here gandhi gave lot of emphasis uh, uh, of uh, Uh, you know village panchayat why the village was having a lot of problem uh, what are those problems prop it is having the problems of ignorance as i told the illiteracy lack of sanitation in the village so lack of discipline in the village so what he was trying to give lot of emphasis on the in, uh, you know indigenous institution that is the village panchayat uh, he went to the extent of saying that the problem of the village sanitation and other would have been resolved long ago and the village panchayat would have been a living force suited to the requirement of self government so what is talking about the village panchayat which has lost its glory that should be placed at the center of all development all activities the political mobilization the economic mobilization the social mobilization all problems starting from health education everything he he wants that a community life and that is founded on a ideal organization that is the village panchayat so mahatma gandhi when he was talking about all these three important dimension that is he talked about um, the self reliance in terms of charkha he talks about education in terms of nay talim he also talked about um, a kind of uh, growing relationship rather reinforcing relationship between the nature culture 
um, and, and human being. He also talked about certain constructive program. Uh, his constructive program is widely came out in 1942 uh, because uh, Gandhian perspective on development will be uh, halfway through until unless we, we discuss the constructive program which Gandhi widely talked about. Gandhiji widely talked about uh, 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 certain issues, those are to be uh, addressed immediately and those have remained uh, part of his constructive program. In, in his constructive program, he has identified uh, 18 major tasks to be uh, taken care of. When Gandhiji came to India in 1914, by that time, uh, a kind of a ethnic or communal politics has started to bring in Indian subcontinent and uh, uh, lot of uh, uh, ethnic caste based and communal disharmony was growing in many parts of the country and uh, uh, by the time um, uh, Indian Muslim League was formed so many caste groups are also formed and uh, a kind of a social disharmony is growing and there is a need that uh, uh, a kind of unity is to be formed, is, is to be ascertained. So in his constructive program, Mahatma Gandhi put his number one agenda, that is a communal unity. He told that none of the, no part of the country can be developed without making, without assuring a communal, communal uh, unity and communal safety for each and every segment of the population. A second part of his thought, he talked about the removal of untouchability. He widely talked about from this part of uh, India, untouchability is a cause that is to be removed. He also talked about the prohibition, that is uh, uh, selling of liquor, uh, that is to be totally banned in the country. And that was one part. And he talked simultaneously, number four point, he talked about uh, that is promotion of khadi and other village industries. So uh, those are to be promoted as a part of his constructive program. He widely talked about the village sanitation, that is our uh, village sanitation is to be improved. His fifth program was the new basic education, his noya talim is to be, is to be initiated uh, so that people become self-reliant, uh, self-govern and also self-employed. Simultaneously, his eighth point was the adult education. Then he talked about uh, development of women in society. His ninth point of his constructive program was uh, his education, health and hygiene that is to be promoted. Then he talked about promotion of, a, of the provincial language. Uh, he also talked about promotion of a national language uh, that is the 10 and 11. The 12th program he talked about uh, along with economic growth and economic development, uh, we need we need a kind of economic equality, a kind of a balanced relationship between the labor and capital. Uh, so his emphasis was on the economic uh, equality. He talked about specifically certain categories uh, of the society. Those are to be taken special care of. He talked about the Kisan, uh, those uh, who are the food producers of the country, special care is to be taken. Then he talked about the liberal, labor class, their interest is to be um, taken care of. He talked about the well-being of the Adivasis, the settled caste and the indigenous people. He talked about the lepers, that is, again a curse on the society. They face the problem of, again, untouchability and avoidance and social distance. So that is to be addressed. He also talked about the student, that is a special category, their needs are to be looked into. And all are to be looked into and promoted by means of uh, means of discipline, uh, collective mobilization. That collective mobilization, what is talking about a culture of civil disobedience, is to be promoted in the country. So what he was talking about, a space to be created within the democratic culture, uh, where everybody will get an opportunity to give their that dissent through civil disobedience. So let us go to this point uh, one by one, how he was talking about, when he was talking about uh, uh, this constructive program. Uh, for him, constructive program um, is, is, the, uh, is the foundation stone of Purna Saraj, that is a complete independence. 
um, and that punna saras to him can be achieved only by fulfilling rather fulfilling all those 18 program of action he has talked about and those 18 programs of program uh, to be attained what he's talking uh, about by being truthful to it also through non-violence means and when he was talking about the communal unity number one point was there he was talking about everybody is agreed about the necessity of this unity but not everybody is willing to maintain that unity. So what he is talking about, a political culture is to be uh, created so that uh, uh, a, a communal harmony can be created, can be ensured in the society. And uh, if, uh, if communal unity is not maintained, it means that uh, uh, the breakability of the heart remains in our society. By uh, communal unity, uh, he was going to the extent by saying that it is the unification of the heart. The unification of the heart of several communities, major religious communities, major linguistic communities, major caste groups are to be together so that the winning of the heart um, is, the, is the major activities and that is to be taken care of by each and every community members those who are living in this country. Then second, he widely talked about removal of untouchability. Mahatma Gandhi widely thought of and widely talked about removal of un untouchability. And as you know that um, he, Harijan is the term was coined by Mahatma Gandhi and he, he dedicated his life for the uh, well-being and upliftment uh, of, the, uh, you know, of the Harijan. And he, he widely accepted the fact that is, Harijan, the practice of untouchability is a curse in Indian society and that curse is to be eliminated by, from Indian society by undertaking certain constructive work. What are those constructive work he talked about? That dedicate yourself to the humanity, dedicate yourself to unite the heart and dedicate yourself to be self-reliant, to be self-governed and to remain uh, self-elevated. So here, here is the phenomenon he is talking about both for communal unity and also uh, unity among the caste group by eliminating uh, the uh, practice of un, uh, uh, untouchability from Indian society. He talked about uh, the whole prohibition that is how, how the prohibition is to be eliminated from the Indian society. Uh, he talked about that specifically the prohibition provision is to be eliminated with the involvement of women and the student in this movement. His emphasis is that who are the immediate victims of provision, who are the immediate victims of a drunkard husband, it is the women and the children. And perhaps they should resist first. It is the women, the children and the students should resist first. The voice should come from that uh, backdrop so that prohibition is total provision take place across the country. That was his third important point he's talked about. Then he talked about the sanitation. He talked about, though there has been varieties of the development in India, but village sanitation has been one of the areas of big neglect of Indian uh, polity and Indian state. And here he was talking about, if you visit the, even the local hamlet, you will find the uh, uh, scattered dung heaps and scattered illness each and every um, uh, hamlets of the villages and those are to be taken care of by introducing a social development program that will ensure basic activities of sanitation uh, in the society, uh, need of sanitation of the people in the, uh, uh, in the society. Then he talked about the woman. I mean that is quite important that uh, Mahatma Gandhi always encouraged women's participation uh, in collective mobilization. And uh, he widely encouraged, specifically encouraged women's participation uh, in the independent movements, especially their participation in the Shwetagraha. Uh, and uh, for him, that women are the real flag, flag bearer of equality in the society, real flag bearer of Sharaj in the country. And his famous quote when he talks about that is why, why the whole notion of empowerment should start uh, from the woman. 
his point is that women in Indian society are called the obola, that is uh, non-empowered, uh, disempowered category. Women in our society, whom we call obola, once become shabala, that is empowered. All those who are non-empowered, they become empowered in the society. So whole process of empowerment, the process of consensitization, which we are talking about, that should start from empowerment of women in the society. That is, obola empowerment is the empowerment of the family, is the empowerment of the community, is the empowerment of the society, is the empowerment of the nation. So his enormous emphasis has always been empowerment of women in the society. His other important part has been, as I told earlier, the health and hygiene. That is, the health and hygiene, perhaps uh, majority of the problems related to health will be taken care of is the health and sanitation uh, and hygiene issues are taken care of uh, from the village and the other remote areas of the country. His equal emphasis was for the provincial language, as I told earlier. Similar, his emphasis was for a national language. For a national language, he talked about this language in indisputably is Hindi. Why he is talking about that? That is, majority of the Indian people uh, speaking in Hindi, so that is to be used in national language simultaneously. Keep in mind, he has not ignored the provincial language. He told that all the provincial language should be inculcated, should be developed, so that our indigeneity, our Swadeshi, our own kind of culture, own kind of link, uh, linkage between our culture, nature and environment remain grounded in our society. If that is not, our development is going to be disastrous. That is his, the result would be disastrous if the provincial language is not promoted uh, for the development of Swadeshi uh, in our country. Uh, he talked about equality, uh, the promote e equality. He also talked about um, uh, the uh, development of the Kishan. Uh, he talked about always because uh, when Mahatma Gandhi was writing as visiting in 1942, even that time, uh, around 80% people are dependent on agriculture. Kishan are the most uh, 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 exploited social categories at that point of time. So Mahatma Gandhi was always ensuring that that is interest of the Kishan should be ensured and it is quite important that in 1946, so when he wrote this constructive program in 1946, um, uh, a National Commission on Agriculture and National Commission for Land Reform was already formed by the uh, freedom fighters and they, they propagated that you know what kind of land reform India should adopt immediately after the independence. So the kind of Kishan movement, kind of peasant movement that was proliferating in various parts of the country that can be addressed. So his heart has always remained with the uh, villagers, heart has remained only with the Kishan. Similarly, he talked about the labor and um, so problem of the laborers, they should not be only a cog in the machine, they are also a human being, so their issues are to be addressed. And lepers, he dedicated his life for the upliftment of the laborers. Similarly, he has widely talked about the uh, whole, whole um, kind of empowerment of the student communities. Now, we have seen the Gandhian perspective of development. He has tried to locate a kind of organic relationship between the nature, culture, and human being. That organic relationship also linked in terms of the linkage between human body, mind, and soul that is reflected in terms of Swadeshi, in terms of Naya Talim, new education, and in terms of his constructive program he talked in 1942. But what is important is that today we stand in the threshold of another century, that is, uh, we are in 21st century, 2020. We are having several developmental perspectives. The developmental perspective, it has also widely shifted from growth-oriented development. We have talked about the development only in terms of growth, that is, gross domestic product in terms of modernization, industrialization, urbanization that has widely destroyed our ecosystem, our interrelationship between the nature, culture and human being. And now we talk about in terms of human development, uh, development as freedom, development and choice. We are also talking about the inclusive development. What is important today is that 
as Mahatma Gandhi started with that, if development is to be sustaining, development is to be human oriented, and development should be in terms of the basic need. And his main mantra of development is that, and was that, and is that, Mother Earth is having everything to satisfy your need, but Mother Earth is not having much to satisfy your greed. So what is important is that Mahatma Gandhi was always trying for a developmental perspective that will satiate, that will satisfy human need, not the human greed. Because he was tried to, along with the development perspective, he was trying to transform human being from a physical soul to a, to a intellectual soul, ultimately to a liberated uh, spiritual soul. And a liberated spiritual soul can think in terms of satisfying development only in terms of need, not in terms of greed. Thank you very much for being with us and for listening to this lecture. Should you have any question, you can write me. I'll be happy to answer all of your questions. Thank you.